back everybody to Bible over a beer. I am Steve. I'm Randy. Salute. Salute. We are covering Ezra. I notice I raise my eyebrows when I take a drink. I didn't notice that, but maybe, hmm. maybe I do as well. I wonder if I've been doing that my whole life. Yep. I didn't even realize it. And revisiting the format, we're going to do like a paraphrase slash summary of what's going on, and then we'll discuss it and bring up some points and basically follow up with that. So it's my turn, my burden, and that's probably a bad word. But yes, um, I was tasked with the summary, and yeah, it it's it's interesting too. But I guess I'll give my follow up after the summary. So this is Book of Ezra. Book of Ezra. Like yep. So it's basically exile time. The people who were exiled, and apparently it took takes place a lot a ways afterwards. Uh, King Cyrus of Babylon issues a decree. God had uh, stirred his heart to say, "Let my people build." So. Um, he gave the. Uh, he said, the "People, the people from Israel can go back and build their kingdom, or their their temple in Jerusalem." And he provided them some um, some money and give the vessels back that Nebuchadnezzar had taken. Uh, and one of the leaders, the most notable one, did the first the first migration was uh, Zerubbabel. <laughs> Zerubbabel. Um, he is tough one. Yep, him and Jeshua are the two main folks that you know they led it back and they. First thing they did is built an altar, and then they, they did some uh, altar sacrifices on it, and they were excited. Um, they celebrated the Feast of the Booths, which we learned about back in Leviticus. Um, it was kind of like a camping out season. Um, and then they started laying these uh, foundation. Um, For the temple. Yep. That is and then correct. Went, yep, and then once that foundation was laid, they were super, super excited. And uh, uh, then... Tragedy kind of hits. People uh, come up and you know wanted to build, and they're like, "No, you have no." Uh, Zerubbabel said, "No, you can't do this. You're mm -hmm. not part of this." And those people kind of turned in and said, you know, bribed the people and reached out to, uh, actually, which is really weird. And we'll talk about a little bit King Darius, and and uh, uh, and somebody wrote letters to uh, Artaxerxes, which was the next king, mm -hmm. right? And he's the one that said, "Stop the building." So, hit a brick wall, I guess. Uh, and then, um, yes. shortly on, the uh, prophecies or prophets, uh, Haggai, Haggai and Zechariah basically prophesied to the people from, from in, in the area, and Zerubbabel, uh, <laughs> Zerubbabel, you got it. Jeshua, they started building it again. And then there was a governor, a governor like that was in charge of the region. His name's Tatinaiah, yep. and he... Uh, he basically he's come up, what are, who are you people? What are you doing? Give me your names. And then he wrote a letter then, well, I got ahead of myself before, to Darius, King Darius. Mm -hmm. which, King Darius. Yeah, I was trying to figure out who he was, and we'll talk about that. And Darius um, orders to decree to find the, basically the uh, temple documents. Saying, yes, uh, from Cyrus. Cyrus. Is giving permission yeah, to rebuild permission? And, and also giving uh, back the, uh, the relics and whatnot that were yeah. taken from the temple. Yeah, so, and he finds it from um, Cyrus. In the so archives, yeah, that's right. And he said, all right, you go for it. And, um, and then we get to cut to Second Exodus, and this is by the name of the book, Ezra, the priest, the scribe, the teacher. He's, uh, he's well-schooled. He was moved by God. And uh, Artaxerxes, um, the new king, mm -hmm. which was the one that shut it down, originally, uh, God stirred his heart to let them do it again. Right. Another, they set another bunch, and uh, you know the the, the the next exiles and their migration. They basically do a lot of genealogy to make sure they're bringing like the the right proper tribes back or whatever. Mm -hmm. So you know, there's some of that again. What we see in a lot of books, uh, and then they get back, and um, he basically he finds out that the original exiles were marrying. You know, he was disappointed. They're like. Guilty were, of intermarriage. Intermarriage, and they were that's a no-no. Yep, not following the stuff, uh, and then it goes into they have made a covenant, and they're going to they're they're going to ask for forgiveness, and then then they said, um, you know, he's all upset, and we'll we'll talk probably about that. Yeah. But at the end, it kind of ends abruptly with um, they made a decision, and it's amongst men. It was noted that it wasn't out of God's command, but they wanted to disband their wives and get rid of you know, and they all kind of agreed. Mm -hmm. But it was during a stormy, windy day, so not everybody heard. <laughs> it's like, it's like, so nobody followed the rules, and basically, 
that was it. I mean, and it's, it's tough to do these because there's a lot of details. Like, what do you want to leave out? Um, I, yeah. In my mind, it went a little bit shorter than that. But So at the end, I mean, at the end, they had uh, judges. And you had to meet with the judge. And he would decide pretty much your fate. And, yeah, you were forced to send your wives and your, and your kids away. That, but they, I don't think anybody really did it, even though they agreed to it. So what... I'm gonna make. I'm gonna add a note. When I read this, I, I'm I'm gonna liken this. Well, each man who had taken a foreign wife agreed to send her away yeah. along with her children. They also offered a ram from their flock for their guilt offering. But although it says that, it doesn't say that the, the wives and the children actually left. Is that what you're kind of getting at there? Yeah, it was like because that is interesting. I didn't think about that. I just assumed since they agreed that they left. And I think some well, and they Ooh, they okay. even did a they even did a, a genealogy or, or a, like a listing of who who what families did intermarry and yes. were pure. That was the last chapter. The, yeah, yeah. But there, what I my take on this book is like a math. I call it, it's like me learning math in college. It's like mm. I barely know where I'm at, but a few chapters later, I know where I was and yeah, I understood yeah, yeah. where I was. And you have to realize too, we're talking about kings of Persia. Okay. Except for Darius. And we're jumping through kings here. All right. So we start out with Cyrus. We start out with Cyrus. And then when you heard him mention other kings, those were the kings that came next. So I'm, I'm thinking some of those must have had, had short reign. Well, so Cyrus, which that I had, you know, so Buzz was going to say, finishing up my kind of vision of this, this takes place obviously way after the exile. It's not even in order um, mm -hmm. of the Bible. Well, it's in order as the Bible was put out, but it's the stories we will learn down the road when we get to the other chapters. And this chapter will make way more sense. Like, I had to find out who King Cyrus was. I'm like, who is, is he? Is he a Persian king? Yeah. So I started, and I'm going to, this is something I encourage you all, and I will link them in these videos, or in this video, some other videos. Like, I, I did the Bible Project, and I like the way they narrate, and they really do a good story view. Mm -hmm. I don't, on Ezra and some other ones, I don't get all the connections. Now they're pretty good in their church and it's legit. But I didn't get the connections how they made. But there's another video, which I also learned. I like him. He's another pastor. And he, when he explained it, I went back and read again. And I'm like, oh, I get it. And that's what he said, Darius, which we will learn. Mm -hmm. So Darius, I think, will learn in Esther, uh, which is a few books ahead of this. And then there's some other books he said that they all reference back to Ezra. And Ezra, mm -hmm. I, they believe, in most people's opinion, wrote this, plus Chronicles. Uh, and, um, so you're, I was a little lost at first. I understood the stories, but I was trying to jump through like all these Kings being named and is, yeah, that's what kind of threw me off too, because it kept mentioning different names and I was like, wait a minute, King, King, King who? And it's like, wait a minute, these are all Kings of Persia in order. Except, well, there's two, there was Cyrus and, and, uh, Artaxerxes. What about Darius? Darius was the is King of Israel, which is why it's confusing mm -hmm. because Israel were exiles, so they were technically not enslaved as a nation like they were in Egypt, but they were mm -hmm. no longer um, a, a kingdom, right? They didn't have their own land because they intermarried and didn't follow God's command, so he right. cast them in it. We, we learned in Chronicles, they cast them out and they were, they were gone, dispersed. Well, somewhere in here, they've also mentioned a prince of Judah. Do you remember yeah, reading that? Um, well, um, All right, I'm sorry if we're confusing you here. Well, and again... It, it's. Like, I, I don't have my detailed notes on me, but I do remember what you're talking tough. about. in Because in, uh, we learned, uh, like I said, the prophets Haggai and um, Zechariah. We learned about those. And then the, the most other notable one, of course, he's not a prophet. Uh, I said priest. I meant prophets. And then the the scribe was right. you know, Ezra, which, but him and Zerubbabel were the two main characters leading exiles. Um so, and, and there was a big difference. There's six years between the two, right? So there, that was confusing at mm -hmm. first, too. And it's in the details, but there's so much that you try to grasp the first few times. It, it took me to, like, watching the videos and, oh, and going to that yeah. verse. Oh, like, it, it connected. And, and that's the big thing is we learn the whole time, the, the, every book. It's like they go good for a bit and yep. they fall apart. And that's the same theme in here because... Um, they didn't, like, they started intermarrying within 60 years. Now, it's six decades, technically, so it's, you know, but it's still a short period of time. They're not even following the law. Right. Then the next exile comes, you know. 
Um, another thing, when they built and they celebrated, it was confusing. They celebrated and there was weeping when the, when the temple was rebuilt. Mm -hmm. The Bible Project, and I, that's why I want you guys to watch it and you to watch it, you know, uh, is they talk about that these, um, and it makes sense. When God, when they first built the temple, when, when uh, um, Solomon built it, and they, they did the, the big ceremony, and God came down in a pillar of smoke and mm -hmm. resided there. Right. This didn't happen the second time, which we we know that mm -hmm. that's the case because they lost their chance. The next chance we will be when God resides on earth with us is Jesus, and he has to come okay. yet, and then we're still waiting for his routine. Return Where it now. ended, I didn't know if that would pick up in the next book. If they, you know what I mean? If if, if he would re so come I think, and reside back, I, I wasn't sure, but we'll find out. I, I I'm gonna guess not. Yeah. Because uh, Nehemiah um, is going. He's the next person, just like Ezra. I think he's gonna lead something. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I didn't read ahead. Um, but yeah, <laughs> but that you know that that King Darius. It took me a bit. I had to watch him. I mean, like I didn't. It's still. I'm glad you knew that. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I couldn't find it from the words, but. Again, like I said, the math equation where once you get a couple chapters ahead, you'll know what you learned now or that you didn't know at the time. Okay. I think we're going to learn Darius. And there's another thing, too, because there's a third third prophet that came with Zerubbabel. And there's some, re I think there's some stuff we'll learn why. I don't know if Artaxerxes actually was touched by God to let them back. I believe his wife was related to one of the... Um, one of the uh, Israeli folks that migrated back, and that was the favor and how it happened. I don't know. We'll learn. I heard, I think we learned that in Esther, possibly. So, and that so you I mean Randy has notes on so and you have the verse so. Mm -hmm. I will I'll I'll look at it again. Right? Yeah, I have here King Darius of Persia. And I got and I'm going to be honest with you. I got the King Darius cut off a of video. So okay, again, yeah, we'll look that up for you and let you I'm, know if you found so, it as a verse. Um, I've, we're right. not teachers, we're not experts. You can make so. a little, yeah, you know, yeah. When you I do can that. make it, you know, make it do what it needs to do. So, I'm going to chime in here real quick. The Lord is really working in this. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Because it starts off with King Cyrus is moved by the Lord. Yes. All right. It was time for his people to return back home. So he was really stirring hearts and, 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 and stirring people to get back to, the, to uh, his good graces, I feel. Yes, and I think that goes in with, uh, remember, the, remember the people that, that were around mm -hmm. that asked to help with the temple? Well, yeah. those are supposed to be the, the grandchildren that weren't taken away to Persia, that really still were part of Israel. Oh, okay. Um, and they, I think... How is it related to what you just said? Well, it was related to just the way you just said because they said no, and that's not God's plan. God, God, it's a, that's why at the end the note was it wasn't God's plan for them to leave their wives. It was man's plan. God wants us all to come together and worship. You know, just like the story of Jesus. Now He wants us all. Right, and they're trying. They're trying to get back in His good graces. Yeah, after, and they're failing. Well, I mean, we we you know, know we can't do it. They're that's, being allowed to return home. Correct. The the number of people that return home was very very small. Compared, yeah, forty-two thousand three hundred and sixty, not including uh, some priests and and um, some others that return home a little bit later. But that's a very small number altogether. Yeah, I mean, if you look back to the numbers we talked yeah. about before, it well, and again, it was just the two houses predominantly. It was it was the house of Benjamin and Judah, um, and then of course they brought the Levites, and then uh, which because that's the priest line. So, and then there was other houses mentioned. But uh, you're right. But it's just, like I said, it's it's a small and short chapter, and it's easy to read, but it's like you don't know some of this stuff. I'm like, I'm kind of confused how it, how it, you know. I'm anxious to get to ahead and go, oh, I get it now. Now, when the people return home, I thought this was really interesting. Ezra thought about having armed escorts or whatever, you know, whatever, however you want to say it. And then yeah. he thought, well, wait a minute. God's going to protect them. He just had faith. Boom. He didn't ask for God to protect them. No, nope. he just knew that he would, which is, and he did. Yep, and it's, that's kind of my point that I'm doing a bad job of of the juxtaposition of chapter nine or ten, when they made the covenant amongst men to mm -hmm. abandon their intermarrying. You know, it's like that's not God's plan. Now, if yeah. it would have been God's plan, then that would have been different. But they didn't see God; they just did it, and and that could be. There's a big storm, and they're telling people, and 
you know, it, that's confusing. And, and then when they were worship, when they were all excited that the, when they rebuilt the second temple, which I didn't know it was completely level. I thought that they just needed to rebuild. Yeah. It. So they had to lay the foundation and everything. Everything. Yeah. So, but it, the people who had saw, the, you know, the elders, they, they, yeah. they cried, they weeped and they said, yeah. you couldn't tell the difference between the crying and the celebration. And the interesting thing, and that's why I want you guys to kind of join in this, look at the Bible Project video on Ezra. And they say that uh, they were weeping because God didn't come down. Like, they were there when God came down the first time. Yeah. I'm not certain. Well, I mean, not, that's what their theory is, but I don't know if the timeline even works on that one because, I mean, this is after the exile. This is this is when King Cyrus, I don't know how long he's after um, uh, Nebuchadnezzar. And Nebuchadnezzar was the one Persian king that, you know, yep. captured him and taken him away and created the, you know, disband the Israel or the Judah, basically the last house of the Lord, huh, their family of the Lord. Right. So. You know, this is not the first time we've heard of intermarriage. I mean, that's been all up until Ezra that's been going on. That's well, been, and that that's was been a sin that's been happening. Well, they started. I mean, when they left, when they left Egypt, you know, don't right. don't intermarry with the Canaanites, you know, and and then everywhere they went. It's in. It's kind of one of the theme. We, you know, again, it's it's repetitive to me, which is I think the intent. <laughs> so right. we understand it. We can't do it. You know, we, we as God's proof to us that we can't do it. Okay, we need, so, so so we don't know if the wives and the children left. I guess we don't know. If well, they I think left. some. But did. I think it's interesting that they the men all met, and they were judged, and pretty much the majority of them agreed to do it. The ones that can hear it because they decreed this, right. declared this during a storm, and, right? You know, which is, I mean, that's pretty, that's pretty amazing. Yeah. Well, yeah, I you mean, know? You, you married, and who knows? They they could have been married for sixty years. That's how long it took, you know, for right. Ezra to get there, and that's when he noticed it. So I don't know. It, it's a good read. It's a short book, a lot of details. Uh, but yeah, how about it, some takeaways? Go ahead. I was just reminded. Uh, that God is really more gracious than we deserve. Yeah. If you look at how he exiled, and then he decided it's time to bring them back home, bring them back into good graces. And it just shows that God, you know, he's not going to turn his back on you when you seek forgiveness. And time is not a factor in forgiveness. You can ask God for forgiveness 10 years from now, 20 years from now. He's going to be there waiting for you. Yeah, exactly. Sooner the better, but I'm just saying, time well, is not a factor. It, Look at all the time. Time is a, is a human concept. That right? went by, exactly. So, yeah, I was going to say the same thing. I mean, because he leaves, he, he he made his promise to David that his lineage would be there. And we wouldn't have Jesus without the lineage of David. So mm -hmm. he has to, you know, it, it seems hopeless now, again, because he's, you know, the, the theme is mm -hmm. you don't ever stick to the laws that are given to you. I mean. Good point. You know. Things were bad, and now they're looking on the up and up for these people, right? They're coming back up, back around to yeah. God. Now, are they going to keep that, keep it that way? Chances are, some of you may know. <laughs> I wish they would, but those that are watching this video don't. I'm going to think that they don't. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, I know it comes around sometime. But we'll, we'll, you know, we'll kind of, we'll, we'll kind of we'll cut to the chase. Israel wasn't really established until after World War II, so that kind of gives yeah. you. Uh, yeah, perspective there you go. on it there you go yeah yeah so they will run in exile even through jesus time okay. i mean but he was you no longer had to do yep. what they did right so we have several books to go in the old testament and it's it's very we're very there. making progress well and it the point of it is is I, i'm i'm sharing mine is if you do make make sure the legitimate i mean videos like you mm -hmm. should have some if you start reading the bible you know you find some some people like I, I don't get it at all. Um, I do like Bible Project. Um, I don't get some of their crosses, but again, they've read the whole Bible. Sure. And then once you you know, and that's what we'll do once we get done with the Bible. And then also, we'll read it in order. So you know, are they reading? What are they reading? I wonder. You know, I'm really enjoying the uh, English Standard Version. I'm glad. I'm, we, I'm glad we switched to that. I do like that, but I'm going to be honest. <laughs> I go for a lot of explanation to the New Living Testament, which is okay. Um. It is, now again, I like to read, so I love NIV, and I'll, I have the NIV Bible, but I have the pre-whatever, before they made the right. uh, latest edition, which you can only get on digital, at least on the Bible app. 
So we so that's why we switched over to the ESV. Mm-hmm. I do like ESV, but there's some stuff that's still hard. New Living is almost layman terms on it. It's not the, yeah. the original Living, which was a paraphrase completely. The New Living Standard is... It's basically the same story. It's just give, it's modern language telling you what's going on. And okay. so I, I did have to, I do, I do cross reference and I, I even go to NIV because I know the digital copy of NIV, it's out there now. It doesn't get, it really doesn't get um, controversial, I think, until you get into the New Testament. That's when they take away the, the, the fasting and prayers. And I don't really understand what it is, but there's a big mm-hmm. hubbub about it. So, exactly. We did it. Ezra. Yeah. What's next? I think we covered it, buddy. What's what's the next? Oh, book? I don't know. Nehemiah. He's, Thank you. he's the other counterpart to I should come um, prepared with that. I should at least look at well, the Well, I mean, so the videos I watched, they reference it's, you know, cuz as we learn, like we learn in Chronicles and we learn in yeah. Kings that we're, we're, the people who put the Bible together with God's help, right? How many chapters? This ah, uh, 50 under 15. Really? Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I like those shorter... Uh... Yeah. Well, I mean, so it's a trade-off. I don't know how many how many verses yeah. are in each. And remember, these are, again, the original Bible or scrolls. They don't have verses and chapters. Yeah. That's meant for us to navigate them. So Now, I'm going to throw this out real quick before we leave, though, because I just thought this was interesting on the old inter- interwebs. Uh, who wrote Ezra? The theory okay. is Ezra. The theory is Ezra, but somebody pointed out that, and, and I'm not good enough with, uh, you know, English. I think I failed English a few times in high school. I was told that halfway through this, it's written in the second or third person, and then it switches at some point to the first person. Yeah, and you'll get that on... So that's sort of interesting. Correct. So that you'll get that in that other video, the Pastures video, not not Bible Project. Mm-hmm. They do mention that. The, the first, it's, it's in the, it's it's like... Somebody's accounting the first part, and then it right. switches to first person, and that's their. I think it's they notice the patterns. I think with how Chronicles was written, that it matches the way yes. Ezra is. You know, so I don't know if we, interesting. And, I don't know if anybody knows. God knows. Um, and, and at the end of the day, as long as the story is pure and, and true, and obviously it was, because a lot yeah. of people say the Bible is written by man. It absolutely was, but they were all stories divine. You know, divine intervention, right? God. Right. His hands were on everybody who made the decisions for the, the Bible. Yes. So we've rambled enough. Thank you, folks. Thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. Uh, catch us next time. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Like, subscribe. Comment, please. We want to hear from you. It's a conversation. We like, want to learn. Yeah, you know, we're learning it. And you guys might have points. And even if it is a while back, you'll get us, you can give us a comment that, you know, because I know this is probably not the most exciting stuff. The content is. Yeah, Maybe exactly. Randy and I aren't. We're, we're excited to each other. But again, our main <laughs> focus is this is our challenge, the two of us to read to cover to cover. That's right. And this holds us accountable to it. So join the journey yes. with us. Read along. Good job, Steve. Good job, Randy. All right, buddy. Y'all come back now, you hear? <laughs>